Hi everyone, my name is Kim and I am Barbara's daughter. Welcome to my floss tube channel. I am a little late today, but still getting it done. <laughs> so um, we had some haircuts for the boys and then of course a very important uh, stop at the ice cream shop on the way home. So it's Saturday afternoon um, and I am here to show you what I accomplished this week with my stitching. I'm going to start with some questions that I had on last week's video. So um, Rafaela wanted to know if I had a favorite quilt pattern for the um, jelly rolls that I had shown that I had purchased. And I don't really have a favorite one. Um, I'm Honestly, I just googled jelly roll quilt patterns and looked for the free ones online. <laughs> so um, it just depends how simple or complex you want it to be. There's lots of free patterns out there and of course lots that you can purchase too. So um, Tara wanted to know what color I used for the house in Lantern Lane, um, which I showed last week. And that is Victorian Motto Red Maple. And Lynn was asking a question about um, Mason Jar Lineup, which I had been working on and finished a small piece of that in um, previous uh, videos back uh, probably about a month or so ago and um, mason jar lineup uh, was a kit and I didn't use the fabric that the kit came with I used a 28 count um, white Lugana I always forget the word Lugana <laughs> white Lugana and um, I just wanted it to come out the same size as the 14 count Ada would have and I needed to, well I was using the floss in the kit so with the same amount of, of threads of strands that they were calling for so I figured I'd better stick with the 28 or 14 count um, linen. Um, both Peggy and Devette um, pointed out to me that on my Peppermint Pals, which I don't have the finished piece here, I put it away, but um, Peppermint Pals, I did not stitch the handle that is on the basket. So the snowman basket is just kind of hanging in midair there. Didn't even notice that. So I went back and stitched it now. Thank you ladies for pointing that out to me. I just didn't even notice it. That it was missing. So, um, Nicole wanted to know, can I recommend a good YouTube channel that she could watch to learn hand quilting? And I have not ever watched any, um, videos on hand quilting on YouTube, but, um, if any of you have any suggestions for Nicole as to quilting channels for hand quilting tutorials, um, if you would put them in the comments below, I'm sure she would appreciate that. Uh, I learned to hand quilt from my mother, of course, right? Uh, and that was, I think, before YouTube. So, um, I don't, ha I don't have any, um, channels for that, but hopefully some of the people watching today have some ideas for you. Um, oh, Denise had wanted to know if Lantern Lane can be done on 14 count Ada. And yes, there are no specialty stitches in Lantern Lane, um, and no over one stitching. So it can be done on Ada. Deb wanted to know what did I use on the mask pouches that I made for a clip? Um, it was a keychain clip that I just ordered off of Amazon and you do have to pay attention to the size. There's all different sizes. So I ordered one and the actual part that clips around like your pocketbook handle or something, it didn't, um, it wasn't big enough. So I had to order a second set that was bigger. Um, I have no idea how big like 2.5 millimeters is like a, I don't know. Um, Debbie. Where did you find the 18 count blue uh, petty point fabric? So I had shown that for Snow Village and it's actually like a gray. It is a bluey gray, but it's a gray, not a blue. But I found that on 123 Stitch um, and I don't know if they have it in blue. Um, they do have it in several colors. So that's where, that's where I got mine. So that is uh, all for questions this week. Before I forget, I do want to do the giveaway. So I had two giveaway charts, um, one for Peppermint Pals and one for Lantern Lane. And so I'm going to go ahead and post. Um, I did the random uh, YouTube comment picker. So the winner of Peppermint Pals, I'm going to post your name right here. So you can see that. Congratulations. I will go back and put a comment on your comments. And if you can email me, um, Barbara's daughter, Barbara's daughter floss tube at gmail.com. I will post that in the description box as well. And I will then mail that out to you. 
And then we had another giveaway for Lantern Lane. So I will post the winner of Lantern Lane here as well. And same thing, if you could just email me, I will send that out to you this week. Congratulations to both our winners. And thank you for all your comments. And uh, even though I said you didn't have to use Lantern or Peppermint in a sentence, some people were very creative and it was actually quite fun reading all of the ways you can use both those words in one sentence. <laughs> um, okay, to stitching. I did have one finish this week and it was on the year in chalk this one is april it says hello spring i am doing these all um, on different fabrics and with different flosses than the called for because i don't want to do them on the um, chalkboard so this is hello spring don't have really great it's bright and sunny and i've got all the lights on but it just seems very dark looking at that i don't know if Hopefully you can see it all. The pink is pretty pale. So as I was doing it, I was like, oh, do I need a darker pink? Cause like, I don't think you can see the word spring from that far away, but in person you can see it much better than you can on the camera. So that one is done. That is the third one. Um, I want to do all 12 um, actually as a gift. And I thought, well, if I don't get all 12 done by Christmas, then maybe I'll start with the four seasons. So that way, at least I would have something that they could change every season until I get the rest done. So I've got three of the four seasons done. And um, I did start, it's in the pile here of whips. I did start the winter one, which I'm, I'm using January for that. So I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and that was my only FO this week and no FFOs. So whips, super, super excited about this one. So. Last week I showed you that I had bought 25 count Mushroom Lugana to try this one over one. Because I had tried it a couple years ago on 28 count. I didn't like the color of the fabric. I didn't like doing it. I was grouchy about the whole thing. I have since done some one over one on Lady of the Flag in her skin. And I did that on 32 count. So I didn't think it was like the size necessarily that was the problem. Um, maybe I just wasn't experienced enough at stitching again to do it. So. I said before I give up and do this two or one over two on 36 count, let me try it on this 25 count because some people were saying it was like easier to do it on 25 count. They liked it better. I really love doing it. I'm having a great time. This is what I have so far. Actually, I don't think I need the board. This is pretty thick fabric. Um, and you can see I started the house there and it is not this beige color that the house is supposed to be. Up in the top here, I stitched some of that beige color and thought that's not really going to show up very well. So I went ahead and decided to do a blue. This is Victorian motto. Let me just pull it out here because I can't remember the name of it. Storm Sky. And I love it. It's got a really, it's exactly the kind of color. Actually, if I could pick the color of my house, it would probably be that color blue. So um, I have always liked that color in a house. So I've done, um, you know, a good bit. Um, that was, I think, two or three days working on that. And I really enjoyed it. And I contemplated just stitching on one thing all week. But then I thought, well, you guys are going to be totally bored if I only have one project to show you. So I put it down and did a few other things and um, I, I think I really want to go back and work on this again, but I'm trying to do like a no rules rotation, you know, where I just kind of like stitch on a whole bunch of stuff and, you know, eventually come back around to this. I'm not sure that's going to work because I really kind of want to work on this, but we'll see. Tune in next week. We'll see if I stitch on this some more because I feel like um, the house is the big part in here, right? So if I could finish the house this week, then like maybe one more week I could get the rest of it done. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. So anyway, when I put that down and decided I needed to have something else to show you, I pulled out um, Old Nantucket by Little House Needleworks because I had fill in on the house to do that's super easy to do. And I've just been like kind of crazy busy with getting back to school starting soon. I work in a school and it's um, a little more hectic than usual uh, this year. So it's been kind of crazy and um, sometimes it's nice not to have to think at night. So I did 
almost all of the house. I have this little corner down here that I have to finish filling in that blue color. So, uh, and then of course I have to do like the fill in for the windows and the doors and then the house will be done. So that is coming along. This is on um, 36 count Weeks parchment. It's the new Weeks on the Zweigert base. And I am not using the called four flosses. I have a whole, um, actually I don't think I'm using any of the called four flosses. No, I'm not. So um, if someone had asked um, about the flosses I use, whether I had like a blog or something where I kept a list of the floss conversions that I do, and I don't, uh, I don't have time for a blog. <laughs> I barely have time for this. So um, if you're ever interested in what floss I'm using, just send me an email and I will dig it out of the bag and let you know. But I'm, I've got a lot of Victorian motto, motto uh, threads in this one. So that was Old Nantucket. And then another whip that I worked on. I had started this last week, Manor at Quaker Hill by Brenda Gervais. And I'm doing this on the called for fabric, which is Legacy Linen by Picture This Plus. And I'm using the called for colors. It's so unlike me, right? I didn't change anything. And I had only worked on this one day when I showed it to you last time. And I just did a second day on it. Um, I think the day after I, um, let me just put a board behind that. This, these flowers are super pale down here. Um, you can see them in person, but they're not really showing up too much on the screen. So I think after last video, I did this flower here. I had to finish the leaves in this motif and I did this entire motif and then I put it away. This is really nice. I love the colors. I am using some of the called for colors and then I substituted a few of them that I didn't have. Like all the reds are substituted. Um, and this is supposed to be um, peach by Weeks Dye Works, but my peach has a lot of brown in it and I didn't really like it. So it's a Victorian motto color. So I love this. This is the kind of thing that I feel like I'm stitching on very slowly, which is not a bad thing. It's like I'm enjoying it. I'm not rushing. I'm taking my time and it just, it's a very enjoyable thing to stitch on. So um, probably gonna put this away for a little bit. It's a huge piece. It's not gonna get done anytime soon, but my goal next time I work on it is probably just to finish this side of the border. So that after that, I can go back and do like this big part down, down at the bottom with the house and the hill and everything. So make a little progress every time. And then the last thing I worked on, it's barely worth showing to you. I had to take my son to get his hair cut this morning. Um, and the older one just goes in by himself and I wait in the car. So I'm working on this. I was only like half an hour. Year of Chalk January, Let It Snow. This one I'm actually doing with a, um, not the called for colors, but a, a white and a blue, but I'm not doing it on the chalkboard fabric. So um, it's just a scrap of Silk Weaver um, 36 count in, I don't know what color. And so I just did the top little snowflake there. So hopefully by next week, this will be done because these are so quick. These are like a, I probably, it's like uh, 2.30 now on Saturday. If I sat down after this video and stitched for the rest of the day, I'd have it done. These are super easy, super quick. If you want something to do that makes you feel like I'm so accomplished because I'm finishing one every single week, do this series. They're super teeny tiny on 36 count, um, but it, it's fun to do a small project and get it done. And I'm just collecting them all. And then when they are all done, I'm gonna finish them all in the same way and put them on a box. Maybe the black and white um, checkered tin I have, but maybe not. I gotta see if they're all gonna look good on that. So that's all my whips. And um, I have a bunch of haul to show you. Actually very excited about this week's haul. So um, I am watching, as you should be too, Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch every week and I keep telling her that I'm going to have to stop watching her or at least turn her off when she gets to her haul section because everything she buys, I want to buy. So she mentioned a website called AnitaLittleStitches.com. I will link it below. I saved my packing slip so I can remember everything I need to link below. And I purchased some scissors. She had gotten some scissors from this site. So let me get my board because it's actually kind of hard to see these, I think. So I just purchased this 
Um, I, I don't know why I really like these black scissors. I've seen, I mean, these are just, they're not expensive or fancy uh, scissors, but I just like them. So I got that and I got a sleeve for them. And then <laughs> look at these cute little scissors. They're huge little finger holes and tiny, tiny little points. I mean, I don't have huge fingers or anything. I just thought they were like the greatest things ever. They just look so fun. So I got uh, two pairs of scissors and I also got, the reason I went there was not really for the scissors, but for, she has thread packs. I mean, talk about making it easy to buy stuff. I mean, for, I don't know, maybe like a hundred patterns. She's got all the thread in a pack for um, whatever you need for that pattern. So I have started this pattern. Um, it's a, a Weary World by Shakespeare's Peddler. I had started it last year and I did not have the called for colors. She actually used a special floss pack. I think maybe this came out one market and she had like a floss pack that went with it. But she has in the pattern uh, Gentle Arts, um, because I think those flosses were like limited edition or something, right? But she has the Gentle Arts floss colors that you can um, use instead. But I didn't have those at the time. And I was like, well, I just want to stitch it. I'm going to pick my own colors. And I'm usually pretty good at this. But I don't know if it was just because this is an older pattern. I think it's from 2009. And so the photo quality isn't great. So I was having a hard time figuring out what color is that? And, and I just, I didn't like it. It wasn't working. So I started stitching, I don't know whether I started in the middle maybe with that box that the verse is in. And I started stitching it and I was just like, no, I don't like this. And I put it away. So when I saw on this Anita's little stitches site that she had a thread pack for this pattern, I said, well, let me get it. Cause I really would like to stitch this. So these are all the gentle arts called for colors. And then I had um, this fabric that I had gotten from Kitten Stitcher. It's Extra Designs My Little Dove that I coffee and tea dyed because I was thinking of using that for something else. Um, actually, I think I did. I was going to use it for land that I love because I wasn't sure if My Little Dove by itself was dark enough. And I decided it was dark enough, but I also decided I loved the way this looked coffee tea dyed. Um, and I really wanted something that was kind of dark and a little bit um, more gray brown than like pink brown. So this fits the bill and I think everything's going to show up really nicely and look good on this color. And so this is a kitted up project now and ready to get started. I, um, people have been talking about like sampler September, which I have not participated in and I don't think I would stitch only samplers in September, but I think I would like to stitch some samplers in September. So um, I have, you know, Christmas Garden already started and I have this one and I think I have some other ones that might um, work for that and are also maybe a little bit Christmassy. So kind of get that stitching done as well. All right. Other haul. I bought this on Stash Unload. I have seen someone stitching this, maybe Laura, or maybe she just bought it. I don't know if she stitched it from Brendan, the serial starter. I don't know. Probably more than one person is stitching this, but it's Catherine Dickinson, 1840. Somebody I've watched has this. It's super pretty. It is not that big. Um, on 32 count, it comes out uh, just over like eight inches um, squ square-ish, you know. Um, so it's not that huge. Sampler September, right? Small sampler, maybe. We'll see. I don't have uh, any of the called. For, well, I have a couple of the called for colors, but not that many. So we would have to substitute for that, which is fine. Um, I saw. Who did I see doing this? Oh dear. Somebody that I recently watched was doing the freebie from Plum Street Samplers, the 12 Days of Christmas one from a couple years ago. I don't know if it says, I feel like it was like 2014 or 15. It is on her blog. I'm gonna put a picture here of what it looks like because when you print out from the blog, uh, what I printed out is just the actual patterns. And yes, they're free, but I don't really wanna like hold them up. So I'll show you the picture um, up there. And uh, I had seen Donna Ray do this. I had seen other people start this. Um, and I just really liked the idea of doing it and doing it all in one color. 
uh, probably red. I think the person I was watching is doing it in one color, in red. I don't know. I watched so many floss tubes. I can't remember what you're all stitching. I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, I printed all these out and I decided I was going to do it in uh, a red silk. So I ordered from Kitten Stitcher uh, Poinsettia by Gloriana. It seems, she has really good pictures on her site. Normally I would like to pick that out in person to see exactly what the red is. But um, when you go to Needleworkers Delight, sometimes, especially now, they, it's hard for them to get the floss. So I figured it's not worth driving all the way up there and then they don't really have very many reds to choose from. So I went on her site, I felt like she had really good pictures and you could see pretty accurately what the colors look like. So poinsettia looks like it's pretty variegated, which I would want if I was only using one color. So I ordered a couple skeins of that and I'm going to give it a try. And I think, I think I might do these as ornaments. I was going to do it as one piece originally, but it would be pretty cute to have like 12 little red ornaments. Um, if I ever finish all the ornaments I'm going to do, I'm going to need another Christmas tree. So that's my plan for that. And so next week, hopefully I'll have the floss to show you and I'll pick out, once the floss gets here, I'll pick out my fabric and I'll show you what that looks like. I was watching um, Celeste Creates, who you should be watching too. She has three videos out, I think. And she is um, a quilter and a cross stitcher and does like all the projects that I want to do. Um, I think actually she just started Manor at Quaker Hill too. So um, I'm really enjoying watching her floss two videos. And she showed a quilt pattern. It's called Chamomile. And um, I printed it out, but I think I'm going to insert a picture because it's very pale colors in this picture. And I don't think that um, you're going to be able to see it too well if I hold up this piece of paper. So I'll just insert a picture. And um, she showed this as an actual quilt done um, on her last floss tube. So I just liked the pattern and um, she used Lori Holtz fabric. Um, fa I forget the exact fabric line she used, but she mentions it in her video. So I thought this would just be a nice pattern to have and um, just to kind of be keeping an eye out for like a fat quarter bundle that would work with it that I would like. Um, so I got the pattern and no plans for what to do with that yet, but, um, but I'm working on it. And the last thing I got, several things that all go together. I decided I wanted to make, I'm gonna do a little crafting here. These pouches, they're called Bound All Around Pouch because you kind of make binding on the top of them by Retro Mama. I will link her um, Etsy store below. Actually, I think she, she might have a website. Whatever it is, I'll link it below. And I really liked how this was like different um, scrap, like strips of fabric sewn together and quilted. Uh, obviously that's a lot more work than just using one piece of fabric, but the back of it is um, just a linen and that's also used to bind it. So I figured, well, if I only have to do it for half the bag, it's not too bad. So I had some fabric left over from um, one of the, uh, the flag quilt that I made and it is, um, Mackinac Island by Moda. I forget who by Moda, but uh, really love that fabric. And I just had kind of like little bits left over. So I had enough to make, um, this is like a small, medium and a large bag. And I thought to myself, well, I'll just make one of each out of this fabric. So I have done the part where you sew all the fabric together. Um, and that's all I've done so far because I was waiting for the rest of the supplies to come. Um, and then I also cut out, um, I have some thirties fabric and I thought that would look really cute in here too. So I cut that out and sewed those strips together. So, um, I bought some things to go with it. So this is, um, Essex linen, no idea what that means. Okay. It looks to be a very, um, high count, like in the fifties, sixties, I don't know. Um, I mean, I can see the holes, but I wouldn't want to cross stitch on the holes. <laughs> and if this is in the color flax, which kind of, I felt like that's what you needed for this, like a real neutral color that would go with any fabric that you pick. And so this is going to be the back of the bag and also the binding that goes around the top. Um, so we'll see. Now, Retro Mama, I have made things with her patterns before. They are really great patterns, worth spending the money on because she takes great pictures of everything. She has really good directions. Um, but her projects are not like, 
quick, simple things. They, they will take a while. So they're the kind of project like you sew the front together and then you put it away and you come back another day and you do the next couple steps. And it's not like you're going to sit down in an afternoon and just make all these bags real quick. Um, but if you're looking for a really cute stuff and good patterns, she's a good person to buy them from. So I also had to get the cording. Uh, I didn't have any of that. Um, that goes on the end of the bags. My mother's probably yelling at the screen going, why are you playing that? Why are you buying that stuff? But I wanted it in specific colors anyway. So I bought this off of Etsy at Mishu Beads. I'll link her below. So I got um, red cording, this kind of teal blue, green, and pink because between um, the Mackinac Island and the 30s fabric, these colors will work for those. So um, the cording just goes on the zipper to make like a little tassel on the end. And speaking of zippers, I bought all these fun colors of zippers from Zip It Zipper Supply on Etsy. Very catchy title there. Try to get that so you can see it. I will link them below as well. We're gonna have a lot of links here for haul today. And, um, so hopefully by next week, maybe I'll be able to show you a pouch, but we'll see. I'm going to have to do it today and tomorrow if I'm going to do it before next week because I'm working every day now. There's no more daytime stitchy time. I'm working mostly from home, but sometimes going into the school building. Um, I'm not a teacher. I am an instructional coach, so I um, help the teachers. And so uh, we are... The teachers are going back to work um, in the school building. The kids are at home for at least the first two weeks with the plan of them coming in in like alternating day A, day B. So um, if I can work from home, I do, but sometimes I need to get in there and, and do some things in the school building. So regardless, I am working every day now. Stitching time has been cut down significantly. Um, but I mean, I still think I had a lot to show you this week. So I think I can still keep going with the week, once a week videos. If it gets to the point where I just didn't have any time to stitch that week, or um, it's going to be like a five, 10 minute video, maybe I'll do it every two weeks, but I don't think, I don't think we're going to have that problem. At least not yet. We'll see if I can get through September, we'll be fine because September is always the busiest month in education. I did want to show you a couple previous finishes. I am getting out some fall decorations. I know it's early. I know you don't want summer to go, but if I don't decorate before Labor Day, it will not happen because like I said, September is crazy. So usually the last weeks of August, I decorate for fall. Um, otherwise, we'd be decorating for Christmas next and just skip fall entirely. So um, I did have a cross-stitch decorating crisis. I cannot find my box of fall cross-stitch pieces. It's in like a Tupperware container, Rubbermaid container, somewhere. I put all my holiday decorations on a shelf that my husband built in the garage, like above the cars. And he brought in all the fall boxes and it wasn't there. But sometimes I put cross-stitch stuff down in the basement because I don't really want it out in the garage. So my Christmas cross-stitch bin is down there and my 4th of July patriotic bin is down there. There's no fall cross-stitch. So I'm not freaking out because my husband said he's going to go back up today or tomorrow in the garage. Maybe he missed a box. Maybe he didn't bring it all down. But after that, if he can't find it, I'm probably going to freak out because I have so, I had done so much fall stitching the first year I started cross stitching all summer long. I was stitching fall pieces. I just love those colors. I was really enjoying it. I have a lot of them that I think I want to refinish because I wasn't very good at finishing them. And I've learned a lot since then from watching other people. So I might want to like take them off of what they're on and refinish them. But there's a lot of stitching somewhere in this house and I have to find it. <laughs> But I have two things I did find that I can show you. So one wasn't in that box because I hadn't finished it yet. Um, and I don't think I've showed this before because I did it prior to um, starting Floss Tube. But if I have shown you this, forgive me because it's possible. Um, this is Midnight Watch by Blackboard Designs. And I just saw somebody was starting this. So um, that made me think to pull it out. And I have this laced on a board. So for those of you who want to see what my lacing looks like. Please don't judge. It's not great, but it's on there. It will stay on there. Um, and it's, I think it's pretty even. Pretty, you know, much about the same amount on all four sides. I did not do 
this border on the bottom um, because I was originally going to put this um, mounted on something and it wasn't going to fit. And then I decided, no, I'm not mounting on there. So now I have it laced on a board and no idea what I'm going to do with it. But um, I can either ask my husband um, at some point to make me a frame to fit it, or I'll just look at um, Hobby Lobby for something that it will fit on as is, because I'm not going to unlace it. It's pretty much how I would want it to be anyway, as far as like the amount of space around the stitching. So um, I had stitched this on a 36 count silk weaver. I do not remember the color. It is definitely not the call for colors. That moon is a Victorian motto, I know. Um, and you needed a lot of yellow for that moon. So uh, I really enjoyed stitching this. There's some huge mistakes down here in the vine, but I don't think you can tell. So that is one of my fall pieces that as soon as I find something to finish it on, fully finish it on, I can display. Okay, and the other, uh, piece that I wanted to show you is Halloween Rules by Lizzie Kate and I have this has been in a bag since last year so I have not adjusted the bows or anything but I will just kind of show this to you back here and then get close up geez I don't even think it'll fit back here so we'll try and scooch backwards a little bit so this is on a shutter as you can see I think I found it at Michael's it's like a gray shutter and I mounted this on um, at the time sticky board because again, this is like a while ago. I wasn't lacing anything then so um, I think I put it on um, Actually, it might be matte board because I don't feel like I glued two pieces together or But it's definitely done with a glue gun not laced and It's also super crooked down at the bottom <laughs> you see that there's like not much room here and like way more room here so I've had this out this will be the third year and it really bothers me so I might take it apart we'll see um, I have it mounted on the uh, striped fabric covered board and then a candy cane fabric board and then it's just tied I glued fabric to the back of that candy cane board and I like strips of fabric and then I wrapped those strips around the shutter and tied it on the shutter so you can take it off really easily. I could have done magnets and washers, but the way the shutter works, there's not, it's a very small flat surface back here and then everything else is angled in. So I thought tying it would work better. And then I've got a bow up front, up top that I have to fluff up a little and some candy corn ghosts and pumpkin stuff stuck in there too. So overall, I mean, I think it looks good, except that it bothers me that it's crooked down there. Um, it's quite a project to undo this all and redo it though. So I don't know. I don't know. Every year I've been like, oh, I should redo that. And then I just like set this on a, a like table leaning up against the wall. And then I like put some kind of decoration in front of that. So you can't tell that it's, <laughs> it just doesn't look good. Um, so uh, this Halloween rules by Lizzie Kate, if you don't know, comes as like you get two of these little horizontal um, designs in each chart. So I think there's six all together, um, six charts. And I did this with um, not the called for colors, but the same colors that were in the chart. I just found my own orange or my own blue or whatever. And, um, a lot, most of it is DMC that I used. Although I think I used some fancy floss up here in the, um, this is like a free, uh, topper and border that she gives you on her website. So, um, I was really proud of myself when I finished this cause it's a big piece of fabric and this is stitched on 28 count Monaco that I coffee tea dyed myself, I think, because again, um, at that point I was really pretty new to, um, like back from having not stitched for a while and new to like new cross stitching. So I was having fun just like coffee tea dyeing stuff and trying out different things. I hadn't used a lot of fancy floss before. Um, so that's why I used it up here. Hand dyed floss. I don't know. I call it fancy floss because who, who calls it that? Chelsea? Priscilla and Chelsea call it fancy floss? I don't know. I call it fancy floss too. From, from somebody else. Um, so I have two fall pieces that I can find. I'm really hoping that I can find the rest and then show you next week um, all the other fall cross stitch pieces that I have because um, I do have a lot and I'd like to show them to you. So uh, that looks like everything that I have to show you. 
thanks so much for stopping by and watching and I hope you have a really great week get a lot of stitching done I hope that you are all healthy and well and uh, enjoying the last few weeks of summer I'll see you next week bye bye